Um, so yeah, and, and because of that, because of the media, so it's, it's one explanation I always give to my clients, why should they be uh, devoting time to write? Because they say, oh, I'm gonna be writing for free to give to the publication. But for example, I wrote um, an article for The Guardian called What It Takes to Be a Migrant Entrepreneur. And because of that article in The Guardian, I got invited to give a TED talk. So that's how much you know, an article can change your life. And because of that TED talk in 2000, so this was in 2016 that I, I wrote the article at the beginning of the year, I then got invited by TED to turn that article into a TED talk. I gave the TED talk in June, 2016. And then almost a year later, I was invited by the Brazilian government. So I went to Brazil. I was invited by the ambassador to represent Brazilian entrepreneurs abroad in a mm -hmm. conference in Brazil. So they flew me to Brazil. I, I felt it was amazing. I felt like a celebrity. You know, it was, it was great. Uh, but all of this because of the exposure that, uh, you know, that my profile has. But, you know, with these interviews, with the TED Talk, and, and I keep promoting. And so I, I, it's one of the things that I tell all my clients. So my clients or, or entrepreneurs are like owls. I compare them to owls. So owls are high intelligent, super clever, uh, but really hard to find because they hide, right? So I turn owls into peacocks. So when you go to a park, and you see a peacock with the beautiful, you know, big tail. Uh, that's what I, I tell my clients. They should become a peacock. And every achievement they have is a feather in the tail. And you need, you know, the bigger the tail, the more people will know about you, the more opportunities you will attract to your business. As long as you still keep the owl's brains, I would agree with that. Exactly. <laughs> peacocks, are, <laughs> pe peacocks are not really known for being an intelligent bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the right combination yeah. is an owl's head with a peacock tail. That is yeah. the, the perfect match. Um, Rachel, sorry, can I interrupt you for a second? Because yeah, yeah. unfortunately, we have a very limited time for this session. Yeah. Um, my personal take, and I, I'm a non-native to the UK, right? I came here same as you back in 2005 from Russia. But one thing I strongly agree with you, and I think young people underestimate quite severely still, is the uh, self-promotion, building a personal brand. Uh, can you give a couple of like, I don't know, top three tips, what do you think young professionals or students need to constantly bear in mind if they want to establish themselves as a name in either a particular sector or, or, or just being a recognized someone, influencer? Sure. sure. So I think number one is to choose a subject that you're passionate and then become known about that subject. For example, I talk a lot about migrant entrepreneurship, even though I talk about PR and all that, but, but because my TED talk is about migrant entrepreneurs, I decided to own, to fly this flag, right? So one is choose that subject. Number two is use your LinkedIn because people underestimate how much you can do on LinkedIn and be consistent. So if you look a lot, there is one post that I do every Thursday morning that it gets at, like yesterday, so far it has about 65 comments. So there is one post that I do once a week um, that I'm either promoting something or I'm promoting someone uh, that is consistent. So for three months now, and I know that every time that I post at that time, I will get um, a lot of visibility. So once you, you choose the subject, two is use LinkedIn um, and make sure that it looks professional, okay? So have a really good photo, use the banner to demonstrate what you're about. And number three is consistency. So just because you've done once and because you're going to do a post and probably, you know, you're not going to grow your, uh, your network just because you've done that post. So you have it to be consistent with the subject and the number of times that you also promote. So if you are, if you chose your subject, make sure that whenever possible, write an article, find a way to share your expertise and your knowledge and your passion within that subject. And once you've been featured somewhere, 
go on LinkedIn and then promote it again. Because I think it's a, it's a tool for not just for professionals, not once you graduate. I think if you start building your profile in the university and the more vocal, the more you appear, the better will be for your profile. Perfect. Thank you so much. No, I totally agree. And I think LinkedIn is a great tool to build a portfolio of activities because for, well, we, we all know business professionals and corporates are now using artificial intelligence during hiring. And quite often they don't look at your CV, but they scan for your LinkedIn profile, yeah. picking up the keywords and then matching with the job description. Now, yes. I know you have something similar within your own company. Can yes. you give us a brief idea of how these tools work, how you match contributors, your journalists? Or, I, I don't know whether journalist is the right word, though. Yes, it is. And it's because the majority, yeah, there, there are writers. Now, it could be any kind of writer or content creator. But at the moment, you know, the majority are actually journalists because journalists are writing articles on a daily basis and they need people to, uh, to interview. So they need experts, you know, to provide comments. Um, the way that it works is it's as you as you well explained is keywords mm -hmm. so what the way that my platform works is once the journalist adds so let's say like that example that I gave um, if you're writing about spices that help people lose lockdown weight um, the journalist will pick keywords so I want um, spices and I want um, weight management and then you can use dietitian, nutrition. So depending on, and then depending on how many times you have those words in your uh, profile, then your profile goes to the top of the, the search results. So uh, um, the more, obviously, the more times it appears or the closer it is to what the journalist is looking for, the more it shows at the top. So it's like Google for the journalists and for the experts. Or, 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 yes, very yeah, good. Very almost almost, almost match.com for business professionals. <laughs> very good. <laughs> well, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the feeling. And in a good way, of course. I it's mean exactly. It. Yes, it's matching. Yeah, pretty much. It's like any other matching, uh, 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 you know, mm. dating or job search. Yes. No, I'm, I'm happy to test it myself because we at QS quite often are looking for comments and questions well, not questions, because questions we get from the market or from our university and business school partners, but sometimes we lack either comments from students and alums or comments from employers or comments from someone who has experienced X, Y, Z, and then uh, we can share their feedback, their comments, their quotes for our channels, and that's how people build profile. Now, we only have a couple of minutes left. Can I just ask... Um, you know, in terms of young professionals, you know, and we both know that it can be tricky and your story is a fantastic story of overcoming obstacles and making the right choices. What do you think are three key things for young people to kind of have on the back of their mind? Like say, for example, I wish someone told me 20, 25 years ago that, taking risk makes sense because you know the way uh i was brought up is what oh you know you if you if you get to a point where you're relatively comfortable stick to it and now i know that i don't think it works so what do you yeah. think are your what, what you wish you'd known back <laughs> then when you were just you know uh entering this job market in the uk yeah so i think i think number one thing is you, sh you should network like crazy. Whenever possible, just build your network and get to know people. Um, that's number one. Number two is offer to help before you ask for help. That's one of the things that I've always done and worked brilliantly. So because, but don't do just because you expect someone to do it. You know, it has to be authentic, right? So it needs to be something that you've really truly are helping because you want to help sure. um and number three let me see what else i could do so three things um oh, it's a hard one <laughs> yeah i'm sure I, there might be something yeah let me think 
Yeah, I think I think I go back to to my first point is is this the, uh, don't put too much pressure to ma to make a decision of what you want to do right now. Because I, when I was younger, I put a lot of pressure on. Oh, I must choose. Like for example, if I'm studying, I don't know. If I'm studying accountancy, I must become an accountant. And then you don't explore other things. So I've done a lot of internships in my life, right? And it's okay for you to do an internship for three months and then realize that actually marketing is really not for me, right? So explore while you are a student, do, even if you have to do an internship for free for three months, do in, in, you know, in marketing and do one in accountancy and do one in, but explore because do that while you're a student. Because once you start going into the job market, it becomes harder and harder for you to change professions and change jobs when one day you were working as an, you know, in an accountancy firm and then next year you're going to work in a marketing agency. You know, Absolutely. that change is way, way harder once you start to be employed. Okay. No, I, so I, I, I think this. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, th this is a fantastic uh, selection of tips, and I think on your last point, uh, I can totally reiterate that also from the employer perspective, the more diverse your portfolio of activities during your university years is, the more they will be interested in you because they will see yeah. you've tried different paces, and then what you've picked up is really what you're passionate about. If you've studied yeah. one thing and you did internship in this thing and you continue your career in this thing, it might raise some question marks because, you know, where you, you reach the, I don't know, mid forties crisis and you discover that yes, instead of being a accountant, you wanted to be a chef, for <laughs> yeah. example. And, and then you, you, you just close the door behind yourself, yeah. but it will be a hard change. Yeah. So be risk averse, be creative, network with people. The only thing I would probably add in terms of networking is be genuine and honest to yourself in terms of yeah. don't try to reach someone who you think is influential just so that you can tick the box you've got him on your portfolio. It's, it's, mm. it's quite scary when you're young, but sometimes when I, I'm looking back, I can say that keep the people who you really like next to you, because it doesn't matter whether they w will be useful, you know, from the practical point yeah. of view, from a selfish yeah. point of view, but it does matter that you stick to good people. Yes, and no, I completely it, agree. Yes. It, it can uh, get really frustrating when someone, you know, thinks that you networked and you made friends with VIPs, but they won't remember you, man. Yeah. You will be just <laughs> one of many. Yeah.